Welcome to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV with me, Salty Alley, and today we're gonna go over all of the fish we have here in stock at our Wakefield location. So come dive in. First, we're gonna start here at the South American and Central American tank. We have some Balzani in here, which are really, really cool. They're sand sifting geophagus, really neat. They're a little bit of a colder water fish. They don't like super warm water. They can handle like 72, 76. I also have some really nice Brasiliensis geophagus, which are getting extremely beautiful colors the bigger they get. They've been here quite a while. I've also got a little Sveni as well, which if you've ever looked at the planted display tank, you'll see a really nice big pair of Sveni in there. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Probably one of my favorites. They've got really nice long streamers. Just really, really nice sand sifting fish. We've also got some redhead tapajos, which are another great geo. Love those guys. And you have to keep in mind too, with the geos right now, they're not super, super colored up, but that's because they're all still young. As they get big, they're probably one of the most pretty South American fish. I also got some parrot fish in here as well, which I, if you want to learn more about parrot fish, you can go back and watch my video on parrots that I did a couple weeks ago. Really awesome, great personality fish, which you can put with both South American, Central American, or you could even put them with Africans as well because they have the attitude to, to handle that. We also have some really nice Severums as well. There's two super red Severums, which are absolutely gorgeous, and a really nice gold Severum. We also have some really nice green Terrors as well, which are coloring up beautifully already. Most likely gonna be male. They've got that absolutely gorgeous bright blue coloration. We have some Pictus cats in here as well, cruising along the bottom. Keep in mind, these guys get large, so they definitely should be in a larger aquarium, like 150 or larger. We also have some silver dollars as well, which are a great filler fish, or other, also called a dither fish. They are just really neat schoolers that'll just swim back and forth. They do get large though, so nice big tank for them as well. So we also have this absolutely gorgeous sunshine pleco here. He's also been here a few months and he's doing fantastic. He's nice and chunky and healthy and he loves to eat clams on a half shell and other meaty foods. These guys aren't an algae eater. They're definitely more of a carnivorous species and they also need wood in their diet as well, super important. But they will definitely love a snack of zucchini as well in their diet. We also have a really nice colored up false yellow jacket cichlid as well, who is doing really well. Keep in mind these guys are mean. Uh, right now he's small, so he isn't really causing much, too much havoc, but they're a fish that you definitely wanna keep with bigger, aggressive fish. And right over here is our koi fish tank. I've got a whole variety of different koi fish here. We've got Oguns, we've got Platinum Oguns, we have lots of butterflies, just some really, really gorgeous koi fish. So if you have a pond, definitely come check them out. There's a variety of three to four inch all the way up to eight inch in here. Here at the Wakefield store, I also have a wide variety of African cichlids in stock. We do have a large variety of mabunas and peacocks and haps and all sorts of really awesome Africans. So definitely come on in and check those out if you're looking for some African cichlid. I also still have some discus available as well. We've got some white pigeons, we've got some pandas, there's some blue turquoise. I also have some really nice Peruvian rust spot angels. These are wild, they're doing amazingly well. They've grown a ton, probably doubled in size since they came in. I also have one albino hecali available left as well. So definitely, if you've been looking for an albino hecali, I've got one. So we're gonna start here at the nano wall. I've got a really nice variety of small fish in stock right now. I've got some really nice peacock gudgeons in here. There's males and females as well. They're doing amazing, super, super well. Very healthy, they eat like pigs. They're just doing great. There's also a bunch of male cherry barbs. These guys are fantastic for a planted tank. If you have a nice, heavily dense planted tank, they will get so, so incredibly red. We've also got some Aldolfoy Cories. I still have a couple of those left. There's some Mexican dwarf crayfish, little orange Mexican dwarfs in there. So a couple blue stiffidons left too. I think I'm the only one that has those left. A bunch of coolie loaches in there as well, little tiny guys. I still have two Amazon puffers left, so if you're interested, definitely come in, check them out. And if you wanna learn more about them, go check back on my Amazon puffer video. Right in this tank here, I've got a variety of male and female guppies. 90% of these were born here. We had gotten a big shipment of female guppies and they had so many babies and I separated them and saved them. 
and now they're all grown up in here, different color varieties. So if you're really not interested in like keeping a very specific color line and you just want a mixture of guppies, I've got a whole bunch of females and a couple males in here as well. There's also some little pygmy hybrosis quarries too, little tiny guys. Still got that metallic beta, which if you've watched my beta video, you'll see him. There's also a couple ranger plecos left as well. These guys are really, really neat, new fish for us. We're not, uh, we haven't really ever had them before, so we're really excited to have them. They're doing really, really well. Right up here, I still have a really nice school of rainbow shiners. They don't look like much right now because they're not quite breeding size yet, but if you can get these guys to breed, they're probably one of the prettiest fish in the hobby and they're North American native, which is really, really cool. We've got some Beck 40 pencils, really great little fish. We've also still got a handful of albino neon tetras as well and my favorite dragon scale beta is up there. <laughs> right in here, we have some pearl danios. These guys get overlooked so often, and I don't know why, because they're so pretty. Um, I guess my lighting maybe where it is doesn't show the colors, but these guys are absolutely gorgeous. They're ir iridescent purple and blue and green, and they're just so pretty. They've also got some really nice orange on them as well. I just decided to add some to the show tank so you guys can kind of see them, and hopefully, they'll get bigger in there and you'll be able to see their full potential. But these guys are so pretty. They've been here for months. <laughs> so definitely super healthy. They've doubled in size and just a really awesome schooling fish. You can see just how well they school and they stay together. Really, really neat. I still have this really nice uh, half moon beta. We've also got still some tiger darios. If you guys are interested in a really rare, awesome nano fish, these tiger darios are for you. These guys are awesome. They're doing amazingly well. If you like scarlet baddis, they're like an even cooler scarlet baddis. So really, really neat. Definitely gotta try those out. We also have some little dwarf anchor cats. These guys are adorable. If you've got a sandy bottom, these guys would be best in there. They really don't like gravel. They like to be able to dig and bury. It's not a fish you see a lot in the tank, but they're cool because they'll come up when they smell food and they're just really neat to have. They also will kind of clean up all the food off the bottom too. Right up here, I've got some purple harlequin rasporas. Absolutely love these guys. They also get overlooked quite often too because from up here, they kind of look just black. They're so pretty. If you like harlequin rasporas, these guys are very similar, same type of fish, but they're purple and just super, super pretty. Really good schooling fish. We also have some albino cherry bars as well. These are the long fin variety. Just really neat, something a little different. You know, if you don't really care for the regular cherries, you want something a little more like salmon color, those guys are awesome. I still have some male guppies here. These really nice, large-tailed guppies are absolutely gorgeous. There's a mixture in there. They're not really any specific um, strain, but they're still really neat. Like I said before, if you just want like a mixed guppy tank, these guys are fantastic. There's also some really awesome dwarf banded loaches. These guys are amazing, and I don't know why they're all still here, because they're so neat. They're a little tiny loach species with tiger stripes, just really, really cool. Not really a bottom dweller like other loaches. They kind of just hover in the middle, but they're really, really neat, fun to watch, active. Definitely should be in a group together. There's also some emerald dwarf rasboras. If you like the CPDs, these guys are directly related to them, but they're a little different. They're like an emerald color with stripes and orange fins. They're just really, really, really pretty. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get them in the video, but if you wanna look them up, emerald dwarf rasboras, you'll be able to see their full potential when they get big. We also have some panda quarries, a fan favorite, everyone loves those. Right up here, I have a mixture of some German blue rams, there's some electric blue rams in there as well, and some gold neons. These guys are just a really unique, different fish. If you're over a regular neon and you want something a little bit different, these gold neons are really, really cool. There's also a couple false Peruvian rumminos in here left as well. I think there's only four of them left. Really cool fish, something different. You don't see them very often. They're definitely rare in the aquarium trade. And they're basically a rummy nose, but their face isn't as red as a rummy nose. They kind of just have the red on their forehead instead of their whole face. And right up here, I've got some nice big neon tetras. If you're looking for a larger size, maybe to put with your discus or something that they won't eat, <laughs> these guys should be good. They're nice and big. We also have some really awesome Celebes rainbows. We haven't had these in a while. These are a great dwarf species of rainbow. Really, really neat if you got a planted tank, they would do amazingly well. We also have some dwarf pygmy hatchets as well. These guys are really, really cute. Um, if you want a hatchet, but you don't have a super big tank, these guys are really neat. In here, we have some locally bred German blue rams. Really, really high quality, nice rams. They're absolutely beautiful. I think I have two males and a female left, so definitely come scoop them up. Not together, because you might get some fighting, but <laughs> somebody scoop up the pair and somebody scoop up the other male or whatever. These guys are really, really nice. We also have some really cool coral pencil fish. I love these guys. Probably gonna grab some for myself. 
really, really nice, very friendly, small nano fish that would do really well in pretty much any aquarium with other friendly fish. We have some really awesome glow light nanos too. I am obsessed with these. I think they're really, really cool. I don't know why nobody's bought them yet. I don't know what it is, but their colors are just so unique and so cool. They're basically yellow, orange, pink with tiger stripes. Like they're so, so cool. Super active fish though. They definitely need space. Even though they're a small fish, they should be something long. Um, like I would say like a 30 long or something would be a really cool take for them and just do a school of them. Really, really cool, but they definitely need space even though they're small. Um, I also have probably my favorite thing in stock right now. We have the Gertrude rainbows. These guys are amazing dwarf rainbow fish. I've got males and females in there. You can usually breed them with ease in a planted tank. Really, really neat fish, super pretty, really unique finage, just really, really cool. We also have some darter tetras too. These guys aren't super colorful, but they're just neat, cool personality fish. I really like them. They kind of just hover like a hummingbird. They're cool. And they will like perch on things on the ground or on rocks and they're just neat. They've got a cool personality. They kind of look at you when you walk up to the tank. There's also a couple albino quarry cats as well as another super popular fish. So not a fish, but we do still have some axolotls here as well. These are the wild type axolotls. I've got two available, nice big size. These guys are awesome. Right up here, I've got a couple varieties of barbs here. There's some regular old fashioned tiger barbs and we also have some five banded barbs as well. The five banded barbs are really, really beautiful. They've got like an orangish color to their body with the stripes. They're kind of similar to the tiger barbs, but a little bit less aggressive as well. And honestly, tiger barbs aren't that bad either. If you do a big school, they usually are pretty friendly. A lot of people, you know, find them to be really aggressive, but it's typically because you don't do a big enough school. You need like 12 of them, and then they'll kind of just mind their own business and do their own thing. Last but not least for this tank, we also have some red eye tetras. We've got some American flagfish in here. These guys are great if you've got a black beard algae problem. They will eat it. They're really, really good at eating algae. They have really pretty colors. The males, you'll, if you see an adult, you'll understand why they got that name. They've got some really cool red spots and blue, but they can be a little nippy. So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't keep them with like guppies or anything, but in a tank where you've got black beard and maybe some bigger fish or like something like tiger barbs, they would do really well in there. There's also a bunch of fry in here that if you had watched my previous video of me stripping those obliquidens, that was a couple months ago, then you'll know that these are their fry here. They've gotten so big already. They're almost to a good enough size to sell, but they're doing amazingly well. We also have some Turkan and Jewel Cichlid babies too that are growing up from our display tank. We also have some really cool elegance quarries too. These guys are so cute uh, and really pretty. The, you get some really cool spotting and contrast with those guys. Would, they would look really good on like a light colored sandy bottom like this. Right in this tank here, we have one little albino Oscar here. He's a cutie by himself at the moment, but just keep in mind these guys get big. They're an Oscar, they get massive. So just keep that in mind. I also have some bleeding heart tetras that are being shy at the moment because I just wiped the tank down. I absolutely love these fish. They're so gorgeous. They've got that amazing deep reddish color with that red spot getting the name bleeding heart. And they've got those really big dorsal fins as well. Just really cool fish all around. In this tank here, I have a mixture of some rainbows. There's some Bozmani and some yellow rainbows in here, males and females. There's one random Burchardi too. He's actually from the show tank. He was getting picked on, so he got put in here, but he is available. Really awesome. AKA the fairy cichlid, a Tanganyikan species. We also have some little clown loaches if you're looking for some small ones, but keep in mind, clown loaches get large. Definitely watch Joe's video about clown loaches and you'll learn more about them. We also have some golden zebra loaches. These guys are pretty neat too. They're just something a little different. They kind of look like a yo-yo loach, but uh, a little bit different as far as coloration goes. And last but not least, we have some albino quarry cats in here as well. Right here in this tank, we've got some veil tail angels. These guys are so pretty. They've got those long flowy fins. Just something a little bit different and unique. And I've had these guys for a long time. Super, super healthy, chunky awesome, happy angelfish. <laughs> we also have some denison barbs as well, AKA the roseline shark. I've got a whole bunch of those, nice small size, really great schooling fish for a larger aquarium. In here, I've got a variety of different angels, mostly koi angels in here, one Peruvian. I've got some cobalt blue dwarf garamis as well. These guys are fantastic. If you've got a little bit of a smaller aquarium, these guys don't get very big. They max out about two inches. Really awesome little guy. 
We've got some serpe tetras, great schooling fish, especially in a planted aquarium, they'll darken up and get really, really nice colors. There's a couple black phantoms in there as well, and some diamond tetras. Diamond tetras, again, they go overlooked a lot, but they're super pretty. I have some in the show tank, and they actually are glittery, like so pretty. And of course, a bunch more albino corn cats. In this tank, we've got a mixture of some mollies. These are balloon belly mollies, a great molly species that stays shorter. So if you've got, say, a 20 gallon, 10 or 20 gallon, these guys would fit really well in there because they don't get as big as your traditional molly. Awesome little live bearing fish. We've also got some black ruby barbs still in their juvenile coloration. These guys are really, really awesome barbs. They get jet black with a bright red nose. Really, really pretty. Awesome schooling fish as well. Right down here, we have a mixture of more male guppies. There's some blonde reds, some cobra greens, and some endler hybrids with the split tails. Super, super cool. Awesome mixture of guppies in there. We've got a really nice orange mustard crown tail still. Love that guy. And a nice little school of Von Rio Tetras. And in the back there, I don't know if you can see them, but those are orange laser quarries, another really great quarry catfish species. They do really well in like a tank with discus. They can handle the warmer water. I have them in the display tank and they do fantastic in there. And that orange stripe right now isn't super bright, but in a planted tank, it'll get really, really bright orange, really cool. So this tank right here is probably one of my favorites at the moment. We've got some amazing sailfin mollies. These guys are huge and they will get a bit bigger. Mollies can get almost up to five inches, especially these guys with these veil tails. That male is amazing. I absolutely love him. Really, really nice mollies in there. We've also got some gorgeous gold rams. Great little dwarf cichlid. I would consider a community dwarf cichlid. They do really well with pretty much anybody. I wouldn't put them maybe with like guppies, but besides that, they do really well. And one of my favorites here as well here are these teffy blue apistos. There's two males, two females, and they're coloring up and getting so, so nice. Love those guys. Up here, we have some long fin tiger barbs. Great schooling fish. These guys I find to be a little less aggressive than the regular tiger barbs because they have those big flowy fins. They're not as fast. And I also have some female Madagascar rainbows left as well. I've got three in there. One of my favorite things are these glass catfish we have. These are an awesome schooling catfish. They're not nocturnal like most other catfish species. They're out about and swimming around out in the open and I just love watching them they're just so unique completely see-through which is really cool we also have some snakeskin barbs back there kind of hiding they're shy and we also have I just brought in a bunch of rosy barbs as well and one other thing we have in here that you can't see at the moment is some red tail honey grommies. They're being a little shy, but they're back there. Those guys are a really awesome little dwarf garami. They stay really small. Right now they're actually full grown and just really cool if you want a garami in like a smaller aquarium. I also have some rummy nose tetras available, a nice big school of them here, and some pearl garamis. Pearl garamis are probably one of the prettiest garamis in my opinion. They're almost rainbow. I also have some blue garamis too all males very pretty and a yellow mustard gas crown tail beta in there too last but not least in here i have some really cool sultan plecos a little bit different than most other pleco species they've kind of got that really cool matte gray color with black spots and they don't get massive either we have some gold dust mollies up here if you're just looking for like a really great friendly community style fish we've got a bunch of those there's also another variety of assorted mollies in there that I got from a customer who had just one too many babies. Whole assortment of platies, your traditional live bearing friendly community fish. These guys are great. If you've got a kid's aquarium or you just want like a splash of color, these guys are great. They are live bearers, like I said, so they'll give you lots of babies if you do males and females, but if you don't want that, then you could do just males. These guys are great. We've got some tuxedos here and some other assorted. There's some sunsets in there as well. There's also some really cool shadow catfish in here, which get overlooked a lot because they're usually hiding, but it's a really cool little translucent yellow striped little catfish. Just something a little cool. They come out when I feed. They're pretty neat. We have some traditional gold head angels in here. Super pretty, love those guys. And we have a couple deep water creek rainbows in there too. And one really pretty little electric blue Jack Dempsey. He is still small, but these guys do get big. They get eight inches. So they're a little bit smaller than a regular Jack Dempsey. And they're a tiny bit friendlier than regular Jack Dempsey's, but 
Wouldn't put him in a community tank, that's for sure. But a semi-aggressive large tank would be good for that little guy. Up in this tank, I have some scissor tail rasporas, just a cool schooling fish. These guys school really, really well. You can kind of see it here. Traditional cool little dither fish. If you're looking for something a little bit bigger, maybe say in a discus tank that you want schooling, these guys are awesome. One of my other favorites are these white cloud minnows. It's an often overlooked fish, these guys, because they're just a white cloud minnow, but these ones in particular are so, so pretty. They've got bright yellow and red fins and just really, really nice. When the males display at each other, it's just so beautiful. So definitely come check those out. They are a colder water fish, so wouldn't keep them in a warm, hot tank. But if you've got a tank without a heater or you keep your tank a little bit cooler, those guys would do really, really well. And last but not least in here, I have some koi guppies as well. And you can see the males are quite a bit tinier than the females, and that is normal. Those males are full grown. They're just a smaller variety of guppy. Right in this tank here, I have a couple really nice blue chips, blue sapphires, if you're looking for an African cichlid. I kind of mixed them in here just because they are a bit more laid back than regular Africans. So being this size, you know, they could be prone to getting picked on. But if you have a tank with just peacocks and they're a little bit smaller, these guys would fit in really well. Really, really pretty fish. When they get large, they get these whitish light blue chips like patterns all over their body there's actually this one here you can't see it but on his side he's already starting to get them which is really really cool there's also albino hoplos awesome little catfish species there they are a schooling catfish so i would get a group of them but really really awesome there's also a couple brachardi in here aka fairy cichlids there's some frontosa if you've got a nice tanganyikan tank and they're small right now so you could grow them up there's some yellow tail congo tetras a little group of three in there something a little different than your regular traditional Congo Tetra. They will get long flowy fins like Congo, but they are yellow, which is pretty neat. There are some Allen Queer Tiger Plecos, which is the L397. Those guys are a really cool Pleco species. They're rare in the hobby. You don't see them very often. And that coloration gets like a nice deep orange color. There's also one blue phantom Pleco in there. There's also some Hillstream loaches in there. Great little algae eating loach species. You should keep a group of them. They are happier in a group but something a little bit different. They will also hear them called butterfly loaches too because they suction onto rocks. They're actually meant for really high flow rivers because they hang onto the rocks with that suction cup on their belly. So they will do best in a tank with some higher flow. And last but not least in here, there are some polka dot botia loaches as well, which are hiding in the back there. Really awesome fish. If you have a snail problem in a larger tank, they do get pretty big, so you don't want to put them in a small tank. But if you have a snail problem in a larger tank, those guys are great. Right up here, we have some red honey grommies, which are not actually a true honey grommy. They do get a bit larger than a honey, so they're not a dwarf species. So definitely keep that in mind when picking a tank for them. We also have some gold rose lines, which if you've been here and you've seen my display tank, you'll see that I have an adult, well, close to an adult Roseline Gold in there, and he's stunning. These guys will get like that. These are just their juvenile colors. They will color up really nice as they get larger. I also have some black rams as well in there, and they're still small, so they're not quite black yet, but if you get a pair of them, they start breeding, they should turn nice and black. They're being shy at the moment, but I still have a bunch of blue angels in there. They're Philippine blues, so really, really nice, true blue angel fish. You can kind of see them back there a little bit. I have one in the show tank and there's also a bunch in the show tank at Seekonk. If you want to see like a true adult, you'll see they get very, very blue. Super pretty. They're already starting to get their really nice blue coloration right now. Here in this tank, I have a little variety of rainbow fish. There's some red rainbows in there. There's also some Parkinsoni rainbows, males and females. And these are the female reds. So if you want a group of them, we've got a nice variety in there. There's also some flagtail porthole cats. Really awesome catfish. They get a pretty good size and a little bit rarer in the hobby, so they're really cool. We have some polyipterus as well, a few of those. Those guys get massive and then will eat small fish. So even though they're small now, just make sure you are prepared, they get very big. And these little cuties right here are some rope fish. You can see them sticking their face out. They're also called reed fish. They do best in a friendly community aquarium no with nothing too small for fish. They will eat small, small fish, but they aren't an aggressive species. So you could definitely do a little group of them. They do like to be together. So doing a few together would be best. You can kind of see they're hanging out together in that hole. And ideally they should be kept on a sandy substrate so they don't rip up their bellies on some harsh gravel because they are scaleless. Right up here we have some nice larger tiger barbs. These are closer to full grown. They can still get a little bit bigger than that. But if you want a nice larger tiger barb, we've got a bunch of those. There's also some gold tiger barbs as well. 
There's also some Colombian redfin tetras. These guys are great. If you have a planted tank, they will color up amazingly well. I have some in the display tank here, in the discus tank, and you can see just how red and orange their fins get. They are absolutely beautiful fish. Right down here in this tank, we have some dwarf neon rainbows, or also called praycox rainbows. Great schooling fish for a little bit smaller aquarium. You know, if you've got a 50 or 40 gallon and you want a group of them, they would do really well. Red fins are males and the orangish yellow fins are females if you want a little group. And they're really, really pretty, like iridescent blue. There's up here too, you can kind of see them. These are golden wonder panchax killies. There's males and females in there. Right down here, there's also some little paleotis quarries. This is a smaller quarry cat species that stay on the smaller side. So if you have like a 20 gallon and you want a school of them, these guys would be a good option for you because they don't get as big as a lot of the other quarry cat species. There are some Borelli apistos in here that I've had forever and the males have just gotten so nice since they've been here. Their colors are incredible, really nice electric blue with like red polka dots on their face. There are also some Pecoltia false petitas as well, which are a pleco species. They're a smaller pleco species. They don't get very big about four to five inches. There's one right there. They've got really cool streamers on their tail, which make them really pretty in my opinion. Right down here, we have a little school of pea puffers. These guys are definitely a customer favorite. They're so, so cute. Small little puffer species, but keep in mind that just because they're tiny doesn't mean they're friendly. They actually can be quite nippy and I wouldn't really keep them with many other fish species. You sometimes can keep them with really fast moving little tetras, but even then it's risky that they could get bit by the puffer fish. So they are best kept in a species only aquarium. They are a schooling puffer fish, so you definitely need a group of them. They will not be happy alone. So the larger group, the better. You don't want any fighting. You know, sometimes if you only get like two or three, you will get some aggression issues, but are you doing a group like five or six is definitely the best way to go with them. So a nice little pea puffer tank would be really, really neat. And last but not least for our freshwater fish, we have a whole assortment of sword tails in there. There are some kois, there's some reds, there's some sunsets, some pineapples, just really cool variety of sword tails if you like those guys, another good live bearing fish. There's a whole mixture of danio species up there as well. There's some zebra danios, there's some leopard danios, and then there's a long fin variety. So they are quite pretty if you want a friendly schooling fish, but you do want to keep in mind that you keep them in a little bit bigger tank. They are very active swimmers, so they do like to be able to have some space to swim. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV with me, Salty Alley, here at a Wakefield location. If you saw anything that really just piqued your interest, definitely come on in and check them out and see all the awesome fish we have here available at OSA Wakefield. And you know what to do, keep it fresh, baby.